In this episode of From the Shelf, we take a look at a custom 1961 comet I call the Astro Rod. This one started nearly 10 years ago when I came across this Jeff Allison illustration titled The Licorice Lady. It says it's a 1961 Cadillac, but it looks more like a 62 Cadillac to me. And for several years I kept looking for a nice 61 or 62, but those kits can be quite pricey. Fortunately, I found that 1961 Comets were not as desirable. I picked up several in the $10 to $20 range and started thinking about how that concept could be applied to one of these. The front end is pretty typical of the era, but the rear has these angry looking canted taillights. I thought those would make a neat design feature once the body was turned around. So I broke out the saw, and off came the roof, then went on to cut the body in half behind the doors. I took the rear portion and ran a piece of half inch tape down the middle. This seemed like a good amount to remove. The front got a similar amount of removal and quarter inch tape was ran along the hood edges. I wanted to keep the hood peak as well as planned cuts that would make sense if one was cutting an actual car. After removing the doors and most of the front fenders, these were then Frankenstein together to form this shortened body. The body was also marked for the bubble top that was found in some packaging. I needed a chassis and engine and a Model T is about as simple as it gets. An AMT 25 double kit was used to see if this could even work as a functioning vehicle. After quick assembly of the chassis and engine, a 125th scale driver was used to see if a human would fit inside and test ergonomics. This is looking exactly how I want it to look. Once I concluded this could work, it was time to start adding details. I thought the bubble top needed something to flank it, sort of like Ed Ross Road Agent. I had these 60s era custom bits laying around, and they looked pretty neat. I also pulled a supercharger from an AMT57 Chevy, because I think all models should have some form of forced induction. A custom grill was now needed. I had a Mercury body, and the double kit has a Lincoln engine. I chose an Edsel grill from an original AMT parts pack to complete the MEL, achieving theme number one, Mercury, Edsel, Lincoln. I also had all the custom bits from an original issue AMT 63 Thunderbird. Funny how that kit's roof bits attach to the coves of the Comet. The custom grill shell is actually the oil pan from the stock engine in the Double T kit, mated to the stock T grill with a bunch of evergreen strips to fill the gaps. The canted headlights came from an AMT 53 Ford pickup. During the sand prime, sand prime stage, I thought it needed a scoop to break up the expanse of trunk lid. The AMT 63 Thunderbird parts were again used along with a leftover piece of hood to continue the peak that is behind the bubble. After sectioning the grill to fit the revised opening, something occurred to me. From this angle, it totally looks like the Greek god Mercury, with the bubble being his hat and the fins being his wings. The interior had to have some space-age roll and pleat design. I used plastruck half-round stock for this. After cutting many sections, I dipped them in superglue and applied them to evergreen panels I had cut to fit. I didn't worry about keeping them aligned top to bottom but made sure they were tight together and overlapped the edges of the template. They were then sanded to final shape and fitted to the scratch-built interior tub. A seat frame was fabricated from solder and the seat cushion had the same roll and pleat design. For period correct entertainment, a TV and reel-to-reel -reel tape player were added. I was even considering having a mascot on the package tray. With the interior now under control, another theme had developed. All of the parts I've used so far were from kits available prior to 1964. I decided to continue this with sourcing the wheels from an Aurora Custom Wheel Parts Pack. I was considering using these hubcaps, but decided the reverse wheels with the turbine inserts were almost perfect, but they have a giant hole in the middle that needs to be addressed. I filled that with the velocity stacks from the Double T kit 
and the center bullet is the Chrome 59 Cadillac taillight cut from an AMT 49 Mercury. It needed some more bullets for actual taillights. I cut these from red sprue and machined them to shape with a Dremel tool. The headlights needed one last bit of surgery. I wanted to have the buckets painted body color with chrome bezels. These were carefully cut with my ninja saw. With much of the chrome stripped and ready to be finished with alclad paint, the vision is starting to become clear. I started painting the interior first using tester stainless steel metalizer. This kept the flake fine and even allowed the parts to be burnished for that 60s glossy custom vinyl. The tape player includes a piece of fine tape. The TV was a challenge. To replicate the screen, that part was drilled out and a separate screen was fabricated. It was painted with a variety of greens and pearls for that vintage tube look. Here's a look behind the curtain into how I mounted the dash and steering wheel. Both of these parts came from the AMT 63 Thunderbird. They also hold the bubble top in place by friction. As soon as this project began, I had decided it would be a candy pearl blue with a nod to Ed Roth's Orbitron. This model is painted with aerosol cans. The base coat of Tamiya TS-30 Mica Silver was followed with many very light coats of TS-72 Clear Blue. To jazz that up, I then applied a very light coat of Tester's Blue Galaxy. And even that thin coat was a bit much, so I applied a few more coats of the TS-72 Blue before sealing it in TS-13 Clear. The interior got trimmed with matching blue piping made from spark plug wire and some various controls, and of course a giant shifter. You might be wondering how someone would get in the car. I scribed lines around the bubble and integrated those into the original trunk lines and hood lines. The entire assembly would swing up to allow access. I thought about including this feature but decided against it, which would kept the build much more fun. One of my favorite parts of this build is the red bullets in the grill. I didn't want the Edsel letters to show, so I drilled them all out and pinned the taillights from an original AMT a la carte in its place. Since I needed five taillights, two kits were required. I tried to keep the underside show car clean. There is a small fuel tank and a battery box outside the frame rails. Most of this was painted with Alclad and Tester's metalizer stainless steel with a coat of dull coat. The Zoomy style exhaust also required two kits. I took a second set of headers from the double T and flipped them from side to side and connected them with aluminum tubing. Some brackets hold them in place. The completed Astro Rod looks ready to explore worlds unknown. After sharing some images of this model online, I was contacted by Jeff Allison and he shared this illustration of a backwards comet he did that I wasn't even aware of. He thought the finished model came out real cool. So that's the story behind the Astro Rod. I hope you enjoyed seeing it come together. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe. You guys know what to do. Because I have all kinds of model car stories to tell. Thanks for watching. You're still here? I guess you figured I'd put this one on the turntable and take it for a spin.